year happens to be the 50th anniversary of the, the very first song you wrote for the Disney Park. <laughs> Walt had a hobby. We thought it was a hobby. He had a thing he was very proud of, and he used to bring VIPs down to one of the sound stages. And in the corner of this sound stage was a, like a jungle room. And they would come in and they would see this thing that was going on. It was called audio animatronics. You know about them now, but not 50 years ago. And people would see orchids singing and birds, you know, standing on perches singing and tiki torches going hug -a -bug, hug -a -bug, and all of a sudden it would rain and they would see this show that they were creating for the enchanted tiki room and they would say, it, it's great, well, what the heck is it, you know, <laughs> that's all they could say. And so uh, we were called down one day to this room and we were sitting on bridge chairs, I remember that. And uh, the show started, and down came this cascade of birds singing. Let's all sing like the birds sing. And we were listening to this thing. And at the end, when, when the rain stopped and everybody was happy again, we said, Walt, well, it's great. What is it? <laughs> and he looked right at us and said, you guys are going to write me a song that's going to explain all this. <laughs> and so uh, we said, uh, yeah, OK, well, well you have to believe, we're going to write lyrics, you have to believe. It's too bad you don't have a parrot. He thought for about a half a second, he said, we won't have one parrot, we'll have four parrots. We'll have a Dutch parrot, we'll have a German parrot, we'll have a Spanish parrot. He was going through a whole conception. And he said, what kind of a song are you going to write? So we looked around and it was kind of a tropical room. So well, a, well, a tropical song of a calypso. So he said, yes, calypso. And what's it going to be called? Well, Enchanted TV Room was a bit of a a nothing title. It's a great good title for the place, but song title, no. But tiki is a great word, and if you're a songwriter and you hear words like tiki, it's kind of good. Uh, so I remember thinking, tiki, 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 that's a great sound, tiki, tiki, tiki. Uh, how about we call it the tiki, tiki, tiki room? He says, that's it, when am I going to have the song? I need it. So, <laughs> In fact, in fact, the following song has been playing now for 50 years. Oh, they know this song. I'm sure they'll sing along. I wish you would. Welcome to a tropical hideaway. You lucky people, you. If we weren't in the show starting right away, we'd be in the audience too. Everybody in the TV, 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 TV room. In the TV, 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 TV room. All the birds singing work and the flowers bloom. That's the explanation. In the TV, 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 TV room. You did many years later, but you always refer to it as the song of the Imagineers, and it's from an attraction called Journey into Imagination. Oh. 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 Audio animatronics had come of age, they really were doing incredible things, and Tony Baxter created this wonderful ride. Oh. 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 Legend just this, today got. Made a legend, and he's going to have a window on Main Street. Now. And he's proud to say he's a beautiful And uh, anyhow, he was creating this, this journey into imagination. And he had a fellow called the Dream Finder, and a little friend of his called Figment. Now, Figment is a figment of imagination. And we were asked to write a song that would sort of explain what this ride was going to be, this wonderful journey into imagination. And it now is like, the Imagineers song, because we all have imaginations. And that's what it's all about. It takes one little spark of imagination to make wonderful things happen. And it starts like this. One little spark of inspiration is at the heart of all creation. Right at the start of everything that's new. For you, imagination, imagination. A dream can be a dream come true. With just that start from me and you. 
<laughs> so Richard, I mean, bit brief, 50 years ago, I mean, uh, I looked like Jason Schwartzman then. <laughs> Well, now let's let's talk about that. Now you have uh, you have an involvement in saving Mr. Banks. Oh yes, it's a very and, exciting movie. That's really and uh, it, it must have been a, a, an odd experience to see your life being portrayed up on the screen by Jason Schwartzman, who plays Bob, I believe. No, no, no Jason, Jason plays you, you and B.J. Novak plays Bob. Plays Bob. No. Well, how did that feel? Well, it was. Eerie. It was kind of marvelous too because they're reenacting a very key moment in our lives when uh, this rather difficult lady who had created Mary Poppins, who was a brilliant writer, Miss Pamela Travers, Mrs. Pamela Travers, came to the studio. And it's quite a tug of war between Walt Disney, who wanted to make the movie, and Mrs. Travers, who didn't want anybody touching her work. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was something. Bob and I were caught in the middle of this thing, really. And Don DeGrotti, the writer, the three of us had gotten copied a story, a way of telling uh, her wonderful character, giving her character a, a purpose, because her stories never really explained anything. Just like Mary Poppins says, I never explained anything. And Mrs. Grant Travers never explained why the stories were there. But we sort of pieced together six stories and we made that into one story. And uh, the, we had to use Mr. Banks as the foil to have the reason why Mary Poppins comes. Mr. Banks is too busy at the bank. And I'm giving away too much of the story, but you'll see. Yeah. You'll see the movie. So one of the keynote songs for Mary Poppins is a song called A Spoonful of Sugar. Right. Right. And in the, uh, in the film, uh, she sings it with a little bird. Right. And she sings it again with herself in the mirror. Right. And I think on this song, you might need a little help. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jason Schwartzman and P.J. Novak. You know, I saw them this morning. They were in a presentation, and they did a great job, by the way. Guys, really. But the thing is that, that when they did the presentation, I saw them afterwards, and I said, well, are you going to be here tonight? Because we're doing that, and I are doing this concert. And they said, no, unfortunately, we're tied up. And I thought, oh, I felt so bad. Because we, we never rehearsed it. This is completely uh, Oh, my goodness. So what are we going to do? Smoke spoonful? Yeah, I think we should do uh, a little bit of smoke spoonful. Smoke spoonful should be in on that one. I know. Yeah. You know? Oh. If anyone else knows it, feel free to chime in with oh, yeah. this on the chorus. We need help, huh? In every job that must be done, there is a of fun. You find the fun and snap the jobs again. And every task that you undertake becomes a piece of cake, a lark, a spree. It's very clear to see that a spoonful of sugar does the medicine go down, the medicine go down, the medicine go down. Again. <laughs> and I love the accompaniment of the audience, that's great. Uh, Robin feathering his nest has very little time to rest while gathering his bits of twine and tweed. Though quite intent in his pursuit, he has a merry tune to toot. He knows a song will 